Hi guys, it's Emma here uh, from First in Architecture. Welcome to another CAD tutorial video. Um, in this session, we're going to have a little look at some of the tips and tricks you can use with text in CAD. Um, so let's get started uh, over here. So I've set up a few text options here. Um, the first thing we're going to look at just briefly uh, is the difference between single text and multi-line text. So just briefly, multi-line text is pretty much what it says it is. It's um, more than one line of text um, that's editable. You can amend the size of it um, and you can also amend the formatting. So if I double click into this text box, just zoom in, you can highlight bits, you can put it into bold, you can amend the size, um, fonts, etc, etc. Um, so that's what multi-line text is. That was generally my preference um, when working with text in CAD. Um, I'll just undo that change. Single line text uh, is a little more tricky. You can't double click and make any amendments to it. The uh, box doesn't come up in the same way as it does with multi-line text and you can't um, shift the text to fit uh, a certain box or, or size that you want it to. So I don't tend to use that one as much. Um, but nonetheless, it is an option. Some people do use it, um, but personally, I prefer to use multi-line text. So if you type in the command text and press enter, that is giving you the option of a single line of text. Whereas if you type in the M text command, that is giving you the option of multi-line text. You'd then draw your box and start typing in the text that you want to put in. So we sometimes have instances where our text is over a hatched area, perhaps, and it's difficult to read because it's over hatch. Um, so one of the tips that I'm going to show you today is just using a background mask so that you can read your text more clearly when it's over the top of other items, whether it's over other polylines or text, etc. So I'm going to select the text here and over here on the right hand side, I have my uh, properties palette open. I'm going to scroll down my properties palette until I get to the text section and there's this option here of a background mask. I'm going to click on that and it brings up a little box. I'm going to select yes, I want to use the background mask and you can have a fill color um, and select the background, but I'm going to use the background of the drawing. So basically it, it will just block out um, whatever other items are behind it. And I'm going to keep that offset at 1.5 and I'm going to click OK. And then when I click away, I'll bring, just bring my text to the front. That's why that hasn't worked. So I'm going to right click on the text, draw order, bring to front. And we can now see the mask has worked um, and it's bringing the text in front of the hatch, making it much easier for us to read. So what we can also do, I'll just show you the different options with that. If I can go onto my right hand um, palette here and just se select um, centered text, just move it back into here. And I'll just show you what you can do with the different offsets. So let's say we want an offset of five. It just brings the mask bigger so that it blocks out more of the background um, so you can see what's going on. So that's the background mask. Very handy little tip if you are working with hatches or text over other polylines, etc. Um, you just need to make sure your text is at the front. Uh, another thing we're going to look at is um, mirroring. So we've got some text here and if I was going to mirror it, I type MI for mirror, press enter select my text, enter, and then I will um, select a line for that item to be mirrored against. So let's say I want to do that. As you can see, it's kind of mirrored the text, but it hasn't actually mirrored it as you would expect it to be. Um, it's not inverted that text. So there's a way you can do this. Um, what you want to type in is, is not that is um, mirror text. You can see that there, M-I-R-R-T-E-X-T. -R and you want to change the value from zero to one. Press enter. So now I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna do M-I for mirror. I'm gonna select the text, enter. I'm gonna select the mirror line. And as you can see, it's actually completely mirrored the text. 
um, and inverted it as well. So that's quite a handy trick. For whatever reason, you may need to use that. Um, and if you then wanted to go back to the this way of mirroring, you just write type in again um, M I R R text and change that value back to zero, and you'll go back to um, the other way of mirroring, which I'll just quickly show you. So quite useful, you can completely mirror your text if you want to. So that's that. Another one that's very useful is um, converting single line text into multi-line. Um, this I have used in the past where I've inherited a drawing from someone else who's used, used single line text um, or maybe a survey drawing. And for whatever reason, I'm wanting to turn that into multi-line text so I can adjust the text box. Um, really simple thing to do. Um, all you type in is text txt to, and then usually it'll come up with a suggestion anyway. Um, so it's text to m text. I'm going to press enter, and I'm going to select my single line text and press enter. And now when I select it, you can see it's got the grip points of a multi line, and I can change the size of that just like you can with a multi-line text. Now, if you want to do it the other way and change multi-line text into single text, you can select it and press X for explode. And that's now been converted into three single lines of text. If I had left it um, in one line as it was and then clicked explode, X for explode, it's just converted it into one single line text. Next thing is aligning text. This can be quite useful if you want to, um, if you're say annotating a drawing and you want text to be aligned with an item or a wall or an object or whatever. Um, so what you can do here is select your text, press AL for align. You can then select the base point, first base point, and I'm going to select that corner there. And then I'm going to select another base point there, and I'm going to ask it to snap to there. I'm not going to select a third point so I'm going to continue and then I'm at this stage I'm not going to ask to scale the object so I'm just going to say no press enter and you can see that the text has aligned um, to that box now I'll just go back and show you what you can do if you do want to scale the text so again we will do align select our object enter specify our first point so I'm going to select the beginning of the line and snap to the destination point then I'm going to select um, the end of that text and the destination point of that. I'm not going to select a third point because we're not in 3D. And this time I'm going to say yes, I want that text to be scaled. And as you can see, it scaled it along that line. That's quite a useful little tool. Um, may come up every now and again where you want to do something like that. Um, but it's super fast and it saves you rotating and things like that. You can just align it straight to it. Obviously you can do that with lines and polylines and geometry generally, um, but some people aren't aware that you can do it with text too. So that's pretty cool. Um, another align feature, uh, which is which is quite useful, you may not have come across it before, is the um, text align tool as opposed to just the align tool. Um, so we've got some text here. I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to say text align, press enter. I'm going to select all these all these um, words to be aligned, press enter, and then I'm going to select the object to align it to. So I'm going to say this one. And as you can see, it's bringing it into alignment. We can move that around and align it how we want it to. However, there's a gap between landscaping and groundworks um, that is different to the gap between services and groundworks and structure. So we have options here. So I'm going to press O for options and I am going to press D for distribute. And you can now see that that will actually um, equally distribute the text uh, as you move it around. So wherever you put it, there's always going to be an equal space between each item of text. Uh, this is quite useful for various things. And then if I put author on, it's just going, you know, you can go up and down with it like that. So that's quite cool. Um, you can also go and set your spacing. So I'll press S for set spacing. Um, let's say 30. There we go. So no matter, turn author off. So no matter where you do it, it's always going to have a space of 30 between each item of text. 
So again, really useful little tool for aligning your text um, as you as you want or need when you're working with text all over the place. And as you can see, with, when it's all spread out like this, it's just a really, instead of trying to line it all up manually like this, and then trying to figure out the spaces between everything, it's really useful to just use the text align tool to get that to do the hard work for you. So I'll just show you once more, text, align, select all the text you want lined up, enter, I'm going to select the groundworks, and I am going to want to distribute it accordingly, so I'm going to press O for options, and D for distribute, I'm going to turn ortho on so that it's nice and straight, and that's that. Last thing to show you um, is bringing your text to the front. So I've brought in a detail here that I'm working on for one of my latest um, books, Understanding Architectural Details. This is um, for the third edition. Um, we've got a SIPS detail here. As you can see, some of the text is sort of getting lost in amongst the hatch here. This text has actually got a, a background mask, but it's not showing because it's, it's not um, at the front. Likewise, this one here. And then if we zoom in on this um, dimension here, you can see that the leaders and some of the hatch is sort of sitting on top of this dimension. So again, it's not very clear. Um, so instead of selecting each individual item of text and right clicking and going bring to front, um, which can be time consuming if you've got loads of details, um, you can just use the text to front uh, command, which is literally text to front, there it is, press enter, and then you get the option, do you want text, dimensions, leaders, or everything? I'm gonna select everything. And as you can see, it's just really quickly brought that straight to the front, everything's clear, you can see all your text. Um, so when you're working on drawings that have loads of annotations and things like that, it's a really good thing to do just before you plot your drawing out um, to make sure that all your text standing proud of um, all the drawings behind. Okay, so that's super fast little look at text. What have we looked at? We've looked at um, background masks, mirroring, um, aligning. We've looked at um, text to M text and exploding uh, single lines. And we've looked at um, the text align tool as well. And then the text to front uh, command as well. So I hope you find those useful. You may come across a situation where you need to use one of those. Um, thanks for watching the video. If you've got anything that you'd like me to do a quick tutorial on, then please do let me know. Um, in the meantime, subscribe to my channel. There's loads more videos coming soon. Um, and until next time, thanks for watching.